Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. Recycling California style. That's a hand and on the other side's a foot. Oh, hand over here and, and a, a foot, foot over, over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> in homage to Silicon Valley, there's some integrated circuits over there. Oh, I see. Because, yeah, you're right. We are in Silicon Valley, aren't right, we? We are. And in Canada, all it took was one look to go green. We were looking around and we saw this beautiful property here with five acres. And I said, if we don't buy that now, that's going to be taken. I'm Emmanuel Beliveau. Come with me on World's Greenest Homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. Just south of San Francisco is the birthplace of the high-tech industry, Silicon Valley. It's here in this garage where William Hewlett and David Packard set up shop in 1938 and began experimenting. From these humble beginnings, the computer revolution began. I'm in Palo Alto, California, in the San Francisco Bay Area. In this tree-lined neighborhood of traditional craftsman-style homes, one designer dared to be different. She went for industrial chic, mixing modern design with personal comfort. She set out to prove you don't have to like granola to be green. Just a few blocks from that old garage where Hewlett Packard set up shop sits this 3,000 square foot home. Ten years ago, it was the site of an abandoned auto body shop. The body shop is gone, and in its place, custom designer Sandra Slater and green builder Drew Moran built this contemporary home. Their own experiment. The main living space is an open concept and has a kitchen, dining space, and a comfortable lounge area. A glass atrium takes you to two guest bedrooms and a guest bath. Up a light-filled stairwell to the second and top floor, there's a master bedroom and master bath. Then a laundry room and the fourth bedroom. Hi there. Hi. Emmanuel. I'm Sandra. Nice to meet you, Sandra. Nice I'm to Drew. meet you. Drew, nice to meet you. Nice to meet pleasure. you. Come on in. Now this is a grand foyer. Well, it's tall. Yeah, it sure <laughs> is. How tall is this? This is about 25 feet tall to the roof. Their home is perfectly oriented to capture sunlight. It's part of their passive solar strategy. As long as it's daytime, they never have to turn on any lights. Beautiful water feature. Thanks. It, it really functions in a lot of different ways. One is for looks, one is for the sound. It's really soothing to have the sound of the water. Yeah, I agree. And the third thing really is for cooling. We don't have air conditioning in the house. It's part of the green program. So we open the windows down here, and the air goes over the water and then helps cool it by venting out to the top. So no AC in this house whatsoever, mm -hmm. just the cross ventilation just the cross coming ventilation. across your water feature, and that's keeping this house cool. And exactly. also the siding of the house. Right, the passive solar is what's helping you there, right. too. Passive solar cooling is all about hot air rising. Warm air is naturally drawn outside the house from open windows on the upper level. And it's replaced with cooler air from the windows on the lower level. Passive solar heating uses windows, walls and floors to collect, store and distribute the sun's energy. And in the wintertime, how cold does it get here? We're down in the 30s and 40s. I see. And by that time, all the leaves have fallen off the trees, so you're going to get a lot right. of exactly. light coming in, heating the home at that time. Exactly. Oh, that's not so bad. Well, this is a beautiful contemporary space. All the living, the public living, is done in this 800 square foot space. No separate dining rooms, living rooms. In traditional houses, we have living room, dining room, and kitchen, and you end up heating, cleaning, right. insuring, and mortgaging living rooms that most people don't live in. If each of these rooms were in individual rooms, it would take up so much more space. It could easily be twice as much space. Yeah. How old is the house? You know, it's 10 years old at this point. A lot of things have changed in the market in the last 10 years. A lot. A lot has changed. It's a lot easier to be green these days. We built the house really as a model to show architects and designers what could be done in green building and that you didn't have to sacrifice a wonderful lifestyle to be green. I know you have carpet yeah. on the floor. Why carpet? Uh, I wanted everybody to be able to sit on the floor. The floors are warm floors so that there's radiant heating and it's really comfortable to lie on the floor. And concrete is not that friendly to lie on. It's also a wool carpet. Yeah, so. it's 100% wool carpet. Unlike nylon, wool is odor free, renewable and biodegradable. I love your sofas. Thank you. Very nice and loungy looking. Yes, they are very comfortable. And you've got a nice area over here where you can just sit and, and check out the fireplace, right. which by the way is beautiful. Thank you. Those are, uh, those are stairs, treads from a French schoolhouse. Uh, recycled oh. from an 18, I think an 18th century schoolhouse. Or These are treads. Oh, I see. This, yeah. is the, this is the bullnose front here. Right. This right. would be the grip you walk on. Right. What a great idea. And they've got great texture and a great color, I think. And yeah. then I used uh, recycled steel around it on the surround. Sure. I just took some sheet metal and sprayed some salt water on it. To create the patina. It to, to create the patina. And then when it got to where I wanted it, I finished it. 
beautiful. Where'd Thanks. you reclaim this from? Uh, it's an old uh, Mexican drying table. You see that there's um, well, a hole there, it? yeah, for the, for the water to go down. My aesthetic is that I like really contemporary, but I also like old. I don't feel like it should be all in one way. Right, if it's too contemporary and modern, sometimes it can just get really cold. Cold, right. I like these countertops. Yeah, they're poured concrete. It's got a nice finish to it, it's beautiful. Yeah. The concrete contains 20% recycled fly ash, a byproduct of coal-fired power plants that would otherwise end up in landfills. Plus, it contains some other surprises. What is this one? That's a hand and on the other side's a foot. Oh, a hand over here and, and a foot, foot over, over here. <laughs> and I like these things here too. I guess once you have a hot pot, you can put it over here and... Right, it's a trivet. It's a built-in trivet. That's very cool. More stainless steel in the house. Yeah, a lot of stainless steel. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think stainless steel is a cold material, and it really isn't. It's, yeah. uh, it can be really a warm, beautiful material. And this countertop actually is one piece of stainless steel. So it's, how many feet is it, do you remember? It's about 13 feet. 13 feet long, and they just stamp the sinks right into it. Extremely durable. It'll never fall apart or have to be refinished. Durability is everywhere in this house, from the highly renewable bamboo on the floors to the non-toxic colored plaster that never needs to be painted. And this is your office space over here? Uh, yeah, it sort of functions as network central for me. It allows me to be, work here and keep an eye on things. That's an interesting piece of hardware you have back here. Uh, yeah, this is an incense burner, I found oh, an it. An incense burner, like that sits on a... Well, you just stick the incense right in yeah. here and it burns it and it catches the ashes and it was a $2 item in a store. I had it welded onto the, to the back. Oh, oh, I see, you had it well done on the piece of uh -huh. hardware. Oh, what a creative idea. Let's find something a little more unusual. Now we head back past the front entrance to the more private guest bedroom wing with its own guest bathroom. It's beautiful. Sink is copper? Uh, it's copper. And this is a cool niche you've got here, too. Yeah, it's a very, very small space in here, but it's a, trying to maximize it so that you've got something of interest in the small space. And this is great, the way you hung this down. Yeah, free floating. And the bathroom leads right into the guest bedroom. I like how you put the windows on both sides of the bed. It helps frame the room, centers it quite nicely. And Drew made the bed. You built this bed? I was a furniture maker at one point. <laughs> Get out of here, this is great. Yeah, it's a great bed. What kind of wood is this? This is California black walnut. So it was uh, oh. walnut that was salvaged when they were tearing out walnut orchards to build subdivisions in Southern California. Beautiful bed. Thank you. <laughs> Nicely done, Thank I love you. it. We've just seen the main open concept living space and the guest bedroom on the first floor. Now it's up to the second level and the master bedroom. Great color. Why purple? I don't know. It's a nice warm color. It's a round roof. It why, is. Why round roof? Why do that? It's an architectural item, but the interesting part about it for us is that it's filled with cellulose insulation, the recycled newspaper, on a fully vaulted, fully curved ceiling. So there's no need for an attic here? Exactly. Exactly. Oh. And I see you have windows at the top, and I guess that's for cross ventilation right. once again, for air to go right. out. Right. So at the lowest point of the house and the highest point of the house, you have the windows that help with the air circulation. And this would be your balcony? Yeah, this is the deck. This house really makes the most of the California sun. Almost every room opens to the outdoors. The outdoors. And we're west facing right now too. We are, it's the hottest part of the house. And these vines and the trellises on the side of the house help cool the house on the side. Oh, I see, so this acts as a, as a shading or as a shield right. from all the heat. Right. Exactly. The deck is made of reclaimed redwood and cedar. And this looks great. Now you've created your own little oasis here, so to speak, haven't you? I feel like it is. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and back here is your bathroom. A slight wall makes a partition for the shower stall. We call it the God Wall. It kind of sits up by itself. I remember in 2001, uh -huh. Space Odyssey, they had that kind, that monolith. Yeah, yeah. This is our monolith. I'm assuming these are the closet spaces? Right. This is the closet, which functionally makes this whole area a dressing area, really. These sinks. This yeah. is wood. It's uh, several pieces of solid mahogany glued together and then turned on a lathe. It's beautiful stuff. Very nice, I like it. And did you add color to it? That's a natural color. And the shower is beautiful. I have a question for you. What do you have on your floor here? That is Alaskan cedar. Any issues with maintaining a floor like this? I mean, it's always getting wet. Well, Alaskan cedar is great for that, but it's a wonderful non-slip surface to walk on when you bare feet. You have the privacy glass here. Yeah. It's actually sandblasted on site. How did you determine the height? Sandra had me stand outside while she was inside, <laughs> and she asked me what height it needed to go up to in order to cover. Now we head to the laundry room, the only place where you can see the photovoltaic panels on the roof. We get three and a half kilowatts of electricity, which is uh, about 80% of what this house uses. And do you store your power for at nighttime or do you grid tied? It's all grid tied. There's no batteries here. It just feeds right back into the system. Do they buy it back? They do. They do. In California, the utilities are required to buy it back. Now it's outside. 
where Sandra and Drew do a lot of entertaining and dining, and the green story continues. The majority of the plants are irrigated through recycled grey water, water that's taken from the sinks, baths, uh, washing machine, put in the landscape by an irrigation system that emits it underground. Oh, so you don't, you don't see anything, it's all embedded in the ground. Exactly. The grey water system is actually a very inexpensive system. It requires just a second set of drains within the house itself and a fairly inexpensive set of equipment, an in-ground water tank collecting 70 gallons of grey water. This home started as an experiment in how to build green, and 10 years later, it still stands the test of time. For me, it's really about a consciousness about what you're doing. Yeah. It's bringing some kind of perspective in it of what, what can I be doing here that can help the planet or at least minimize the, the harm on the planet. And nobody's perfect, and yeah. you, sh you don't have to get all caught up in your underwear about being perfect, <laughs> but you try and do what you can. Our next homeowners get tired of the city life and dream of building their own home in their own piece of paradise. Well, they found a perfect location with some breathtaking views. The goal now was to make sure they didn't spoil it. That meant building green. We're in Summerland, Canada, on the shores of the Okanagan Lake in the Okanagan Valley. This is wine country. Some call it the Napa Valley of the North. This five-acre cliffside property, reaching all the way to the lake, practically sold itself. We were looking around and we saw this beautiful property here with five acres. And I said, if we don't buy that now, that's going to be taken. The rare chance to own this tiny piece of paradise and not spoil it was their motivation for going eco-friendly. Everything about this home pays homage to the spectacular countryside. Built into the side of a hill, this house is super insulated, energy efficient, and loaded with recycled and reclaimed material. Meet Felicity and Bernd Stahl. Together, they run a pharmacy just outside Summerland. They live here with daughters Astrid and Frances, and their furry friends Sandy and Josie. The main floor has an open concept living room, kitchen, and dining room. There's also an office and a media room. Upstairs on the second level are three bedrooms, including the master bedroom with its own bathroom plus a balcony. Over the garage is a private guest suite. Altogether, it's 3,500 square feet. The green story of this house begins outside, from the recycled asphalt driveway to the home's exterior walls. Constructed of ICF, insulated concrete forms, covered in natural clay stucco, these sealed walls keep out drafts, cold spots, and dust. And that cuts their energy bills by 30% compared to a traditionally built, similar sized home. Hi, come on in. Welcome to our home. We decided we'd like the high ceilings and the foyer goes two stories high. The pendant overhead uses LED lights, light emitting diode. LEDs last 10 times longer and use 95% less energy than typical incandescent lights. The slate was an option instead of tile. I like the look of it. It's easy to maintain. Just wet mop and that's it, and it always looks shiny. That's what appealed to me about the slate, and um, basically got a very good deal on it. <laughs> so I <laughs> so went with this slate, and we've used that throughout the house. Inside the doorway, just to the right, is Bernd's office. This room, like all others, is painted with a low VOC, volatile organic compound paint. VOCs are emitted as gases in some paints, adhesives and finishes, and may cause adverse health effects. So this is the living room. It's open, it's family friendly. Our suite is actually from Africa, where I grew up in Zimbabwe. And what we've done is we've, we've had it recovered and it uh, fits in quite nicely here. When you sit here on the couch, you're actually looking right onto the water. Some people sometimes are here and they, they think that you could actually drop off the cliff, that's what it looks like. And I like that. And I, I have my poof, which... <laughs> they call this a poof. <laughs> you know, sort of, it's very comfortable to sit on. And it's at a nice height. There's no other one that I find is as good as this. This rug, like all the rugs throughout the house, is made of wool. The carpets, I like them because they're all naturally dyed. Don't seem to have any problem with allergens. Also, with the air quality of the home is that the dust is just not as big a problem. With this air exchanging system we have in here, the air gets exchanged every two hours. 
That air exchange system, or HRV, heat recovery ventilation, exhausts stale warm air, which in turn helps to heat the incoming cool fresh air. Though the temperature rarely dips below freezing in the Okanagan Valley, they indulged in a two-sided wood-burning fireplace, which they use just three or four times a year. We don't need it as a, as a heat store source, but, but it lends a lovely ambience. With 18-foot ceilings and such a large open space, they went with radiant floor heating on the main floor. We thought we wanted radiant heating because it's nice to be warm on your feet and you can just be barefoot and, and uh, yeah. it works very efficiently. So this is our kitchen and it's really the heart of the home. We wanted to have a very open kitchen and I thought if I'm going to spend time in the kitchen like I do, I want to have the view. And we put these stools here. Actually, we're talking to each other far more now. <laughs> We've got a, a lovely wine cellar over there, which Bjorn thought was a bit of overkill at the beginning, but it fits nicely into the space. And you can have dual temperatures. You've got your red wines at the top and your white wines at the bottom. The cabinets and so forth, they're edge grain fur, and we used granite for our countertops. It's very easy to maintain. Felicity uses a simple vinegar and water solution to keep it clean. The edge grain fur comes from sustainably harvested local forests. All the appliances were selected for energy efficiency. Felicity and Bear say the coffee maker was another indulgence, but this one is well used. We have central vac, so you can just uh, sweep everything under here. So that is a marvelous invention. And then we have a, a, an appliance cabinet here, so it keeps clutter off the counter. And then we have a lovely big counter here, which works very well for entertaining or for baking. And over here we have a bar sink, which doubles as a great cooler when you're entertaining. It's handy if I want to put vegetables, you just can use this over here, which works very well. Uh, but mostly we use it uh, uh, when we're entertaining, fill it up with ice, move this out the way, uh, put our beer and pop or whatever else we need in there, that works very well. So over here, this was one of the features I absolutely love. Uh, the two columns, which are structural, uh, these are reclaimed um, fur beams, and um, I think that looks quite nice. It ties in very nice with the edge grain fur of the, of the cabinets. We've just seen the living room and kitchen. Just beyond the kitchen is the dining area, with a walk out to a patio and those beautiful views overlooking the lake. We don't often eat in the dining room. We tend to eat out here all the time. Yeah. This is just fabulous to sit down and have a glass of wine and, and eat. It's, it's just great. Yeah. yeah. We live in a fantastic place. On the deck, one of the people who was working for our contractor suggested uh, the stamp concrete. I loved it because it almost looks like the slate. It's very easy to maintain. You can just hose it off. Back inside, there's one more room on the main floor. Felicity and her daughter's favorite room, the media room. We wanted a dark room so that we could watch movies. Bian doesn't particularly like the room, so we knew that that would be good. We wouldn't be bothered by him. I don't, I don't <laughs> no windows. I don't particularly like rooms without windows. I get a bit claustrophobic. Upstairs is where the family sleeps. And we have uh, Francie's room on the left and Astrid's on the right. Recycled drywall is used throughout the house. All the windows are double glazed, argon filled with a low E or emissivity coating, which retains heat in the winter and coolness in the summer. This is our bedroom, our space. It's very comfortable. We've got a beautiful view to the lake from, from the bed. Nice and bright, which is something that we both liked, except uh, our first summer here, when Ben found that his morning was quite rudely disturbed with the sun hitting him straight in the face. So that bothered me a while, for a while, and then we decided to put this on this year, actually. And now we sleep so perfectly in the morning. A patio with a panoramic view extends the bedroom to the outside. The master bedroom has an adjoining master bath. Yeah, so this is uh, my space, bright and airy. I've got a lovely countertop here. I just fell in love with this piece of granite. It's got so many different colors in it and it picks up the color of the, the wood and the walls. All our toilets in our house are low flow, as is the, uh, the shower heads. In a separate building above the garage, there's a private guest bedroom suite. An aluminum-covered, non-slip staircase brings you there. 
although we don't use it very often, uh, it's meant to, to look better and better when you use it a lot. The more you use it, the, 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 better, the better it looks. So, uh, I mean, we've had uh, staircases that have been uh, out with carpet and with tile, and we rep we've replaced them both times. This will outlast us, for sure. So this is our guest suite, which we feel is a very comfortable space. It's got a beautiful view, pull-out couch, and there's a bathroom on the side, and then we have a kitchenette here. Barrett and Felicity have family overseas, so when they have visitors, they tend to stay a while. We also chose to use cork um, on the floor because it's a little bit warmer, and above the garage, we thought that that might be an issue. The cork flooring is sustainably harvested from the bark of the cork oak tree. I've never had cork flooring in my life before, but I don't think uh, there's any better uh, floor than cork flooring. When you walk around bare feet on this, it's got a, a little bit of a cushion effect. Cushioning just, effect. It's just beautiful. This is the only uh, feature that we've kept from the from the old old house. It's a it's a lovely old door which uh, Frances uh, finished off in woodwork, and uh, I think she's done a great job. Felicity and Berndt always dreamed of building their own home. Inspired by this gorgeous piece of land with its breathtaking views, they now have a beautiful, energy-efficient, eco-friendly place to call home. <laughs>